Welcome. This episode shows how to accurately calculate the number of concrete bags that you'll need to purchase and have delivered to your house or project site. Without using this approach, you could end up with too many bags of concrete. Concrete bags are often difficult to return to the store and they tear very easily. When torn, a concrete bag's dust makes a horrible mess. In addition, too many concrete bags are difficult to dispose of in the trash. I'll start by defining the square and cubic foot dimensions that you will need as a basis for your calculations. I'll then show how to accurately determine the concrete required for the majority of the geometric shapes that you will encounter. This includes showing how to calculate the concrete required for standard rec rectangular structures such as driveways, sidewalks, footings, concrete walls, etc. Estimating concrete needed for concrete piers with submerged fence posts or columns. And finishing up by showing you how to calculate the concrete required for tapered or bell-bottom piers. Please note that most county and municipal engineers require bell-bottom piers within their building permits for decks, patios, gazebos, and similar structures with large column supports. Most people know that one square foot with its 12 inch sides equals 144 square inches. When adding a third 12 inch dimension to expand it to a cubic foot, we get a total of 1728 cubic inches. In other words, there are 1728 cubic inches in one cubic foot. As we move forward, this will be a key conversion factor in all of our concrete calculations. For our first example, we'll calculate the concrete bags required to replace this bad section of my driveway, which covers a 105 and a half by 134 inch area. Calculating the volume by multiplying the length, width, and height provides 56,548 cubic inches. Dividing this by 1728 cubic inches per cubic foot gives us 32.7 cubic feet. In this case, the label on the quickcrete bag shows that each 80 pound bag provides 0.6 cubic feet of concrete. So dividing our 32.7 cubic feet of concrete by 0.6 cubic feet per bag gives us 55 bags of 80 pound quickcrete bags required for the job. Per the asterisk, it's important to note that this cubic footage will vary by the type and size of concrete bags you are using. It's a good idea to check your bag label in the appropriate website where you purchase the concrete. Lastly, this approach works for all standard rectangular structures. In this example, we're going to calculate the concrete required for 10 concrete piers with submerged columns. This approach also works for submerged fence posts. In this case, we are working with piers with a 6 inch radius, a 30 inch height, and submerged 6 by 6 columns, which are actually 5 and 1 half by 5 and 1 half inches. In this case, we are using the standard volume formula for a cylinder, which is pi r squared times the height. Our pier volume is 3.14 or pi times 6 inches squared times a height of 30 inches, which provides 3,391 cubic inches. Dividing this by 1728 cubic inches per cubic foot gives us 1.9 cubic feet for each pier. To account for the submerged column, we use length times width times height, which gives us 907 and one half cubic inches. Dividing this by 1728 cubic inches per cubic foot provides a value of one half cubic foot of displacement for each of the 10 columns. Subtracting this from the pier volume provides a concrete requirement of 1.4 cubic feet for each embedded pier. Dividing this by 0.6 cubic feet per bag gives us 2.3 bags per footing and a total of 23 bags of concrete for the entire job. For my last example, I'll show how to calculate the concrete required for the bell-bottom piers that I built in Episode 4 and Part 3 of my patio series, which showed how to install the piers and columns for a large open-air patio shown in the upper left photograph. As shown in Detail A and, as I previously mentioned, it's important to note that most counties and municipalities require bell-bottom piers within their building permits for decks, patios, gazebos, and similar structures with large column supports. As shown on the left within the highlighted area, my patio pier requirement called for a 12-inch diameter at the top, expanding to a 16-inch diameter at the bottom, and a 30-inch depth, which is below the frost line where I live. 
Similar to the last example, we're using the standard volume formula for a cylinder, which is pi r squared times the height. However, in this case, the column above is attached to the pier with Simpson ties shown in the lower two photos, so we will not be subtracting a displaced volume from the volume of the bell bottom pier. The volume of our 12 inch diameter pier is 3.14 times 6 inches squared times a height of 32 inches to obtain 3,617 cubic inches. In this case, I exceeded the required 30 inch depth by 2 inches to ensure that I easily pass the county's pier inspection. Dividing this by 1728 cubic inches per cubic foot gives us a volume of 2.1 cubic feet for each 12 inch diameter pier. Similarly, the 16 inch diameter pier is 3.14 times 8 inches squared times a height of 32 inches which is 6,431 cubic inches or 3.7 cubic feet. In this case the actual volume is the average of the 12 inch and 16 inch diameter piers which is 2.9 cubic feet. Dividing this by 0.6 cubic feet per concrete bag gives us 5 bags per footing and a total of 40 bags of concrete for the entire job with its 8 footings and columns. Believe it or not, this turned out to be a very accurate calculation. To finish the job, I only had to purchase one additional bag of concrete. This concludes this episode showing how to accurately calculate the number of concrete bags you will need for most projects. At this time, I'm moving on to my next project. You're more than welcome to follow. In addition, if you have a great project that you want to post on my YouTube channel, email me some pictures and a brief description of it. If it qualifies for the Let's Fix It Right standards to help others, I'll interview you over the phone as a guest do-it-yourselfer, produce a high-quality video, and post it on my Let's Fix It Right channel. For the year following this posting, I'll share 50% of the potential YouTube benefits with you. If you have any subject matter requests or recommendations, please contact me. All of this said, I recommend that you subscribe to my channel, follow my projects, and save a bundle of money doing it.